to St Mary's on a fairly warm Sunday. Firstly, I'm going to start with an apology to all those that were trying to listen to us last week, especially Michael in Kenya, who um, was getting very worried because he kept saying, where is church? Where is church? <laughs> um, something went wrong. We had a Facebook problem last week. Just didn't, didn't post at all. So um, that was... But I've just checked. We are live this morning. So behave yourself, Trevor. Morning, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, we've got a message for Jesse, but um, we, won't, we won't repeat it. 
but it's really good to have you here on this slightly warm, warm Sunday. Um, also this morning, as you would have noticed, we have nobody sitting playing the keyboard. <coughs> Ian, Ian is at a wedding that took place in the open air yesterday and he was camping out last night. <laughs> we wait for an update. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let's uh, stand and worship the Lord, singing and praise God from whom all blessings flow. suddenly found the music we called it was different to what we normally do. <laughs> Please have a seat. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it is, it is interesting because if I stepped back, I was behind the speakers, I wasn't here in the, the, the music room. Uh, an excuse. An excuse. <laughs> Soft summer rain falling on parched earth. Waters of God flow down upon us. Torrential floods ripping lives into pieces. Waters of God have mercy upon us. Soaking waters which nourish the seed. Waters of God replenish us. O Holy Spirit, giver of light and life, impart to us thoughts higher than our own thoughts and prayers better than our own prayers and powers beyond our own powers that we may spend and be spent in ways of love and goodness after the perfect image of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, our setting the scene is just a short video. So today marks the start of a sermon series um, based on the course Living in Love and Faith. Um, so basically this explains what living in love and faith is better than I can. I 
do expect people to respect me, but I don't expect people to know what to do with me. Some people might never have met a trans person before. Marriage says me, which is a deep sense of commitment. Being a Christian and being gay, I found a brilliant church. I don't have to hide anything about myself. Living in love and faith is a landmark project which the Church of England has worked on for three years. It's a way of enabling us to think together about identity, relationships, marriage, sexuality, things that define the way our lives will be led. Living in love and faith is a library of resources. There's a book, there's a series of podcasts, there's real life video story, and there's a course. Welcome to session three of the Living in Love and Faith course. As part of the series, we'll be listening to people's life stories, welcoming people as they are, and seeking to see Christ in them. Being Christians, we've got a view of marriage, that just means the God of family. I was born with intersex traits. I would love to feel that I can be me along with everybody else. My hope is that people will be open and courageous. Living in love and faith involves the whole church, and we encourage you to take part too. Living in love and faith doesn't impose its views. It listens to different theological and biblical views and enables us to explore what God's will is for the church and to learn to live with each other. You would I'd like for someone to treat you as they treat other people. God is still provided. It just wasn't the way that I expected. My deepest prayer is that in living together in love and faith, we demonstrate the same love for one another as we have received from God himself. So basically, um, we would have done it as a course, but history has told us that when we do a course, we might get eight people. And it's a really important piece of work for us all to engage with. Um, for those of us who've been Christians for a long time, it may mean really, maybe perhaps even rethinking what we think about sexuality and marriage. Next year, um, Synod, General Synod, I think it's next year, are hoping to have a vote on whether same-sex marriage um, can go ahead. Personally, I hope it does but there's going to be plenty of people that don't. And there will be people in this church that are not sure about it as well. And that's fine. The whole thing about living in love and faith is that we can live together with those different opinions and, and love well and live well together with those varying opinions because each person holds um, their, those differing opinions for very good reasons. We might not agree what those reasons are, but they hold them you know, with, with faith. So it's learning to respect each other and to live alongside those difficult conversations, I guess. So please do engage. Come as often as you can. I'll catch it on um, Facebook if you can't. There's only five sessions, um, but it's, it's a really important conversation that we're going to be having. So our action song is God is Love, because Whatever we might think, or whoever we love, God is love, and that's the most important love of all. And we did this at Messy Church yesterday, so who was at Messy Church yesterday? Okay, you've got... If you were up here dancing with me, you've got no excuse, you're going to have to teach the adults. So the video is just the words, not the actions, so you are going to have to look at me doing it, which is hilarious, because I only learned it yesterday as well, so I'm going to totally get it wrong. So let's get it wrong together. Would you stand, please? <laughs>
And it's now time for the, for the, for the little ones to go off with Leslie to, uh, to Sunday school. Um, I think they're going to the beach today. <laughs> they're going to the beach. So, <laughs> as they go to the beach, let's, let's pray for them. Lord, we pray for our youngsters as they come to learn about you and to meet you. We pray for Leslie and Elaine as they leave them this morning. And Lord, we just pray they have a really good time at the beach. Amen. Amen. So you know now, don't you, that when, when somebody says to you, why do we sing so many songs in church? Why do we have that, that bit at the beginning where we just sing songs? Why do we sing those songs? Why do we sing those songs? Because God is love. Because God loves us, yes. <laughs> we sing, why do we sing? Because God loves us. So we come before the God of love to say sorry. Creator God, you created the earth whole and round. You created us to be whole people, but we have become fragmented, cracked and broken. We have been broken by false promises, lost relationships, shattered trust. Forgive us and help us. We have become cracked with the experience of sin, prejudice, oppression and fear. We have become fragmented, building up walls instead of lending hands. Forgive us when we have done the breaking. Heal us where we have been hurt. Forgive us and help us. Let your light shine through our cracks and scars so that we might bring light to the world, showing that you, that in you we are made whole, in you we find healing, in you we find renewed life. Help us to forgive, to love, to mend. Forgive us and help us. God is the potter, we are the clay. When we are cracked and broken, God helps to bring us back together. Sometimes we don't feel the same afterwards, but God uses every piece and often offers us the newness of life to begin again. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We stand again to sing of God's love. Um, we might need to turn the um, dish down, down. down the page. <laughs> so we stand and sing, the king of love is my delight.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. You please sit for the first reading. first reading is from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The new life in Christ. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour, do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be claimed to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. <coughs> but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. For the word of the Lord. Well, we're going to do something strange now. We're going to use a psalm. Now, I did have a brainwave, but um, decided I wasn't brave enough. I was going to give everybody a number, or a letter when they came in, an A or a B. As easy as go A and B. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody on this side is A with me, and everybody on that side is B with Trudy. Go Team Trudy. <laughs> And we're going to, going to go through and use Psalm 143. So shall we, shall we stand this? Can we get a bit of feeling into it? We stand up. Don't we? I don't want you to feel too relaxed. Right. Listen, Lord, as I pray. You are faithful and honest and will answer my prayer. I am your first servant. Don't try me in your you thoughts. Do, you because no one is innocent by your my enemies are chasing me, crushing me in the ground. I am in total darkness, like someone long dead. I have given up hope, and I have none all over. I remember to think about the many things you did in years gone by. Then I lift my hands in prayer, because my soul is a desert, thirsty for water from you. Please hurry, Lord, and answer my prayer. I feel hopeless. Don't turn away and leave me here to die. Each morning, let me learn more about your love, because I trust you. I come to you in prayer, asking for your guidance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Please sit. Is anybody expecting to do this reading? Yes, Eve Lover. She's not here. Our second reading comes from Matthew 7, verses 24 to 29. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as their scribes. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. It's time to encounter God, to come and, and sing. And why do we sing? Because, because God loves us. loves us. So we stand and we sing, hopefully getting it all right as we go along. <laughs> Starting with, there is none like you. And I warn you this one, Ian's playing something that doesn't quite sound like what we're singing.
Lord, as we sing of your love, come down. Your love shine for us on the cross. As we come together this morning with so many different ideas and thoughts about love, Lord, we just ask you to speak into our hearts, to bring us together and show us how you loved. And we pray for Trudy now as she comes and brings your word to us. Amen. Um, so I think as we start this series, it's only fair that I lay my agenda onto the, on the table and tell you where I'm coming from. So I am totally inclusive. Um, I love everybody, as I believe God loves everybody, and I can't wait to marry same-sex couples. I am perfectly aware that there are people who disagree with that. Um, I have trans people in my family, and I have lesbians in my family, and, you know... They're fine. I love them. They're normal people. You've got to trust them. They're normal people. They just love. You know, what, why do we go on next in the twist about it? But anyway, we do. So, from the void and darkness, from utter nothingness comes life. An explosion of life, light, land, water, vegetarian. Vegetarian? Did I just say <laughs> Did I just say vegetarian? You love vegetarian. I meant vegeta vegetation. Yeah, God loves everybody. Even vegans God loves you. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Okay. Land, water and vegetation. Living creatures. How can I take this seriously now? I said that. Living creatures of every kind. All of them created by God. Among them is humankind, male and female, made in God's image and likeness to be faithful and fruitful. God speaks life into being and it is good, abundantly, breathtakingly good and wonderfully diverse. God gives life. This week we start the sermon series on living in love and faith. It's a tool put together by the Church of England to help Christians think about human relationships in all the ways that we love each other. It's to help us learn together about how the Christian understanding of God relates to questions of identity, gender, sexuality, relationships and marriage. These are questions that touch us all deeply. So I ask you to engage with this sermon series by reflecting on what you've heard asking questions and above all with respect for the differing opinions that we all might have. Before lockdown we started to learn about the six pastoral principles for living well together. This was meant to help us live in love and faith with all the differing opinions that we encounter. So I encourage you to find out more about these but they help us to address ignorance by learning together about identity, sexuality, relationships and marriage in the light of our call to be faithful to both scripture and the church's tradition. By learning together with people who have different perspectives and lived experiences in relationship to those topics. To acknowledge prejudice by welcoming people as they are, loving them unconditionally and seeking to see Christ in them by reflecting deeply on our attitudes and behaviour in order to nurture understanding and respect between people who disagree. And to admit hypocrisy by not condemning certain behaviours and attitudes while turning a blind eye to others. Remembering that we are all weak, fallible, broken and equally in need of God's grace by learning from one another about the challenge to holy living and the wideness of God's mercy as the Spirit moves within, among and between us. To cast out fear by consciously demonstrating and living out what it means for perfect love to cast out fear even in situations of disagreement by modelling openness and vulnerability as each of us wrestles prayerfully with the costliness of Christian discipleship. And to speak into silence 
by remembering that we are the body of Christ, called to relate deeply and openly with one another, sharing what is on our hearts as well as in our minds by practising deep listening without a hidden agenda that encourages conversations about questions of human identity and to pay attention to power by being alert to attempts to control others, remembering that God's spirit alone can bring transformation into our lives and the lives of others by following Christ's example of service and compassion as we accompany one another in following the way to the cross. Many of us here today and at home would call ourselves disciples. Disciple means learner, and as followers of Jesus, we are called to be lifelong learners. Please don't ever think that just because you've been coming to church all your life, that you know all there is to know about God and faith. I think Trinity Sunday last week reminded us that we don't know. <laughs> so let's get into some Bible. These verses come at the end of the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount, the first section of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Matthew. Here, Jesus is teaching about the way of life that embodies the kingdom of heaven. Matthew records four other sections in Jesus' teaching in chapters 10, 13, 18, and 20 to 25. In between, he tells of the miracles that Jesus performed and of the other events of his life, death and resurrection. It's as if the Gospels structure is deliberately designed to emphasise the connections between learning and living, hearing and doing. At the beginning of chapter 5, Matthew tells us that when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them. Beginning with the Beatitudes, Matthew records Jesus' teaching about a whole host of topics, including anger, adultery, divorce, forgiveness, giving to the poor, prayer, fasting, worrying, and judging others. He finishes with this story about the wise and foolish builders. The crowd is astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Here is Jesus the teacher, teaching his disciples, teaching us, so that we can learn to fully live as people of the kingdom of God. So listen to this passage again. I'm going to read it in a slightly different translation so that you're not used to it. It's easy to skip over a story that is so familiar and ask yourself these questions. What have you noticed that you haven't noticed before? What do you think it is? What, what do you think it tells us about learning and about life as a follower, a follower of Jesus? And can you remember a time when you were astounded by Jesus' teaching? So I'm going to read that passage again. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the wind beats against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. I'm just going to give you a moment to ponder those questions. So we've seen how the people in this passage described Jesus' teaching not only as astounding, but as having authority. When we, set out, when we set out to learn about something, we want to be sure that the person who is teaching us really knows what they are talking about. We want them to be people who are trustworthy, people we can rely on to tell us the truth. For followers of Jesus, that true teaching is found first and foremost in the Bible. 
We believe that the Bible gives us the most truthful account of who God is and who we are. It sets the story of Jesus within the story of God, who reached out in love, creating, sorry, I'm on page, creating the world and all of us in it. It tells how humankind turned and continues to turn away from God's love and how the whole world is affected by our turning away our sin. It's like, I've said, I've said this before, it's like this whole book is like God going, I love you, I'm here. And the people go, oh, we love you too, God. And God's going, yeah, give us a cup, it's, you know, come into my embrace. And then the people go, oh yeah, but I want to do that thing over there. Bye. And they go and do that thing over there. And they, and they get it all wrong. And God goes, but I love you, I forgive you. And the people go, yeah, we love you too, God, come here. And, you know, and they cut God, and then they go, oh, but that thing over there looks far more interesting. And they go and do that thing over there, and forget about God. And God's going, I forgive you, come here. And it's continuous through the Bible. It's, it's that like, yeah, we love you, God, but that's more interesting, so we're going to forget about you, bye. And God, I forgive you, come back, I forgive you. It tells of Israel called to be the people of God. Who? Keep getting it wrong. It tells of the failure of God's people to obey God's life-giving commandments for their own well-being. It tells of a God who calls us back to the immensity of God's love again and again and again. It tells how God, seeing that we couldn't help ourselves, came among us as Jesus Christ and proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God. It tells of Jesus' arrest, torture and execution, suffering the condemnation that should be ours. And it tells of Jesus, raised by God from the dead, now gloriously alive and still with us by the Holy Spirit, making everything new. It tells us of the certain hope that one day this transformation will be complete and that Christ will return. The Bible is central to the life of the church. But how do it as many kinds of writing, the poetry, laws, history, letters, relate to our questions about identity, sexuality, relationships, and marriage? How do we discern the wisdom of God, especially when it often seems as foolishness in the world? How do our questions relate to questions that the Bible addresses in different languages and cultures from our own? Answering these questions involves listening carefully to one another, to other Christians who have passed the faith on to us, and to people who have given their lives to studying the Bible. We will find that Christians understand the same text in different ways. And that will raise questions about how the Bible is interpreted. We will explore these issues further in the sermon series as we go along. There are two other things to think about as we prepare to learn together. As Christians, the Bible is our source of, te of Jesus' teaching. Like many other parts of the Bible, that teaching is rooted in its own time and place. It might come as a surprise to some, Jesus wasn't a Christian. Jesus was a Jew at a specific time in the particular political, social, cultural context of the Middle East in the first century. So when we come to his teachings, we bring in our 21st century baggage and look at it. No wonder it doesn't always make sense straight away. We need to work it out. Because of who Jesus is, how he lived and what he taught, we believe his teaching relates to all times and places and still has authority for us today. So we need to understand both Jesus' context and our own to grasp what he is asking of us. We will need each other's help to think about these things. And finally, we learn by listening to the real life stories of those people we heard at the beginning, of followers of Jesus today, telling us how they have understood his call upon their lives. We all have our own stories to share, 
and each of us will relate to the questions we're exploring in some way. We will have family members or friends that are exploring these questions. All these stories remind us that we are exploring questions that have real consequences for ourselves, for our families, our friends, for everyone. This is really important stuff. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, write the story of your grace and truth into the lives of your people, that believing in you, the world may have life in your name and in all its fullness, as you have promised us. Amen. Amen. We stand and sing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me.
stand, we declare our faith, saying, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Will you please sit as Julie leads us in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are our creator, the centre and source of all that is good, true, worthy and wholesome. You, Lord, are the source of hope, peace, joy, fulfilment and satisfaction. We praise you, our living, loving God, that you are not remote from us, but in Christ you had your glory, hid your glory, and you walked in the dust of our world. You came as the servant king to bring healing, hope and a new beginning to all who put their trust in him. Lord, we worship you and we give you praise for the way you have surrounded our lives with your love and touched our hearts with your grace. We praise you for the way you speak to us through your word and for the way you listen to our prayers. We come to you now, Lord, to pray for your church and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the people of Ukraine who are being forced out of their country due to the war. We ask you to be with them as they settle into new countries and to new homes. We pray for those left behind who are unable to leave. We pray for those who are grieving for their loved ones. We pray for peace and an end to that war and all wars and conflicts in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the church throughout the world. We pray for the church leaders, bishops, clergy and lay ministers who bring God's word to our congregations. Help us all to show the love of God through the way we live our lives daily, at school, work and at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the sick in body, mind or spirit. We ask you to, for your healing touch upon their lives. We pray for those on our WhatsApp prayers, the pew sheet. We pray for Granny Ann, Brenda, Kitty, Hannah, Jean and Brian, Julie Amos, Christine, Ted and Sandra, Maria and John, Natalia, Sylvia, Sean, Liam, Trish, Mary and Alan, Nicola, Dawn, and in a moment of silence, those known to us personally, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for love and compassion, Lord, for those who are dying and those who are bereaved. Surround them with your peace and people to love and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the homeless, for refugees and for the street children across the world. We pray for those who help them. We thank you for the Lugisisa in, in Della Village project in South Africa and the Footsteps project in Kenya. We ask your blessing on those who work and support them and those who live there. We pray for our sanctuary here in Gravesend and your blessing on those who attend. May they find permanent shelter soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for our schools. Bless the teachers, the support workers and the children, especially those who are anxious taking exams at this time. Give them your peace and may they be renewed and refreshed 
during the summer break. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to govern the hearts of the world leaders and governments, that they might do what is best for the people of their countries and work towards peace and reconciliation where it is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you call us to love one another as you have loved us. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit to demonstrate your love in all we say and do and are. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody like to see whether or not they've eaten their ice creams at the beach. <laughs> I'll tell you what I could do. I could nip on to the next one, really, couldn't I? And do the while we wait for the Notices. Um, I'm really encouraged because there's there's quite a lot of um, bottles appeared at the back of the church this weekend. Yeah, I've got promises of people dumping stuff at the vicarage as well. Yeah, you, you, you can dump stuff at the vicarage. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. on, I said. Yeah. No. So if if you want to drop stuff off during the week, as I put on the on the on Facebook. Those of you, Jesse, that are at home, um, you can bring things in on a Wednesday morning um, while we're at Toddlers, or you you can bring them on Sunday. You can get in touch with me, but I'm not that available over the next two weeks. So you could drop things off at the vicarage. Vicarage, yeah. But the, um, the summer fair is fast approaching, and we do need, need a lot more bottles than that to make, make, the, stall, make the stall tick. That um, there are posters at the back of the church still um, and flyers. So if you've got, if you know anybody, you can take them, give them to, pass them out, um, pin them on the back of a bus when nobody's looking. Um, that, that that would be would be great. Um, Godparent Sunday. Oh yes, that, that, yeah. And then we we started a course, but we are taking a break from the course on on the first Sunday. On that, that'd be the third. Because we didn't really think he worked for cafe worship. Well, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but it wasn't. So, but the third Sunday is, is being observed as Godparent Sunday. So, th there's a chance there. It, this is for the youngsters. If you know who your godparents are, those that have been baptised, and they're within reach, grab them and bring them to church on on on, on the third. third. Like the yeah, that's right. And tell them. Tell them they'll have. They'll have a really good time because it's not church as they understand it. And, uh, that's good. Right. So that's that's on, on, on the third. I don't think there's anything else at the moment. We're beginning to go. Oh, hang on a minute, there's a hand up over in the congregation. Just a thank you for the uh, food bank. We took an awful lot of food up there last week, which, you know, it's not quite as much as we used to take, but it's getting there. Yeah. And every, every single tin at the moment helps. Thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll say that again. Remember, remember everybody, that, that the food bank is in desperate need. Yeah. Um, and and, and even, even people who are struggling themselves, if you actually look, you might not be struggling quite as much as somebody else. And I think that's, that, that's our, our message. Uh, and again, you can drop stuff off for the food bank on a Wednesday morning and bring it in to, to, to Leslie or me at Toddlers and we'll, we'll put it in a box if you're out there listening to this. Right, I look, do you think they look like they've done something wrong? I think they look like they've done something. Yeah, they do. Do you want to take your shirt? <laughs> 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 who's, who's, who's the first bike person? Right, turn around so they can see your lovely faces. Anyway. What it was this is about building that house on rock on sand. Big, big voice. That's what it is. How can we wise guys from Jesus? <laughs> 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 By reading this, isn't it? Yeah. By reading the Bible. By building our life on Jesus. By listening to your parents. By following. Listening to your teacher. 
I can't read that myself. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm not together, big voice. Coming to church. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy it at the beach? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My victory ran out of sand. No. Oh. <laughs> No ice cream. I, I told them to come down and see whether you'd finished eating your ice cream. <laughs> if I'd have known, there's some in the, free, in the freezer. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We stand and sing again, and why do we sing? Because God loves us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. <clears throat> Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be with you and those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week, everybody.